Tan Corla, this more on through a dom, a covron, a yen of Le Clan Paddy Hart, Agus Gohori Hat, than Van Kela, Agus the Jimmy Hart. This more on through a dom, fresh and covron, O Cree, a yen of Le Chilock, Le Corja, Agus Cove Glockyha, Monica Barnes, Tom on Vrodul, Asave Eglanunchi, Gosh Kame Vonica, Marhak the Dala, the Dal, Kantar Dunlira, August Marvan. Monica Barnes was a great friend and a mentor. She was a formidable politician who fought for women's rights throughout her life. She was elected in this house in November in 1982. It is easy now, 18 years into the 21st century, to forget the Ireland of 1982, 36 years ago, when Monica first entered the Dáil. There, she was a shining light in a small group of progressives in a Conservative Party. Monica Barnes became politicised, leaving Mass one Sunday in the 1960s. She bought a copy of Chains of Change, a pamphlet published by the Women's Liberation Movement. She became active in the second wave of feminist movement in the late 1960s and in 1970s. She was involved with the Council for the Status of Women and merged feminist pol politics with party politics when she joined Fine Gael in the early 1970s. She was one of a number of feminist women who joined the party because of its vision for a just society. She was one of two Fine Gael TDs to vote against inserting the Eighth Amendment into the Constitution in 1983. She was quoted in the Sunday Tribune in 1983. I decided, she said, I could only compromise myself up to a certain point. Women were the reason that I was involved at all. And if I kept quiet, as far as I was concerned, I was redundant as a politician. She received hate mail and verbal and physical abuse for her stance. She supported divorce in 1985. She regularly spoke on women's rights in the Dáil and was the chair of the Oireachtas Joint Committee on Women's Rights from 1989 to 1982. In 1982, she famously wanted it put on the Dáil record, her opposition to the fact that only leaders and party leaders, and, the, and thus only men, were able to make statements on the X case. And on the 18th of February in 1982, on Taoiseach Albert Reynolds stood in Dáil Éireann to outline the details on Ireland's injunction of a 14-year-old girl. He was followed by a brief statement from each opposition leader. And as the chair called time, two deputies from the backbenchers rose to their feet. Two of the 13 women who made up a parliament of 166. Before both were ruled out of order, Monica Barnes remarked, may I comment on behalf of the women of Ireland and the women in this forum who have been excluded from making statements on this issue, that this is a reflection of the exclusion of women in all structures of our society. This isn't a point of order, responded the Cian Corla. No, said Madeleine Taylor Quinn. This is a protest, but the House moved on. In an interview earlier this year, she cheerfully admitted and I've changed slightly her quote, that Fine Gael's old guard considered her a pain in the behind. She also said, I did not get elected to the Dáil after all those years of working for women to sell them out. I had to stand up for women and for the health and the future of women. That's where I was in 1983. In that year, she had voted against the Eighth Amendment. It is appropriate that we recognise her in the year that when we repealed it. She was an outspoken advocate for women's rights and on occasion expressed disappointment and anger of issues dealing with women. 
Speaking in the Dáil in November 2001, Monica succinctly summarised her own outlook and her role in public life. I cannot emphasise enough that this country undermines and denies women's rights and status. This is not polemic and I'm not making a political point. It is a personal female perspective and I speak on behalf of half the population. Monica spoke for the marginalised and the excluded, often at a time when it was easier to stay silent. She always spoke her mind. Her life was dedicated to campaigning and fighting for the rights of those who didn't have a voice in the Ireland of that time. Recently, as was mentioned, she was a member of the Women's Parliamentary Caucus right up to her death, and she had attended and contributed to the meeting, the latest meeting uh, that was held here uh, in the House wholeheartedly. And finally, just to wrap up, the Irish Times once captured her with the headline that read, propelled by principle. Monica's principles helped to propel this country to a better place. My deepest sympathies go to her husband, Bob, daughter, Sarah, and granddaughter, Alva, Alva that's here today, and her daughter, Joanne, and her extended family. It's me and Lom, Kovrona Yenov, Lena Farkela, Bob, Iniaka, Sara, Agus Joanne, Agar Inian, Alva, Agus Achailach, Ilag, Er Yeshje, Gorav, Ahanam Bilish.